students, this is Unit 3, Triangles, Lesson 3.4, Mid-Segment and Coordinate Proofs. Mid-Segment and Coordinate Proofs. Make sure you get a date, time, and location here. All right, so you're going to work through this page. You have two separate problems, both of them pretty basic. Uh, when you're done, restart the video. Please, I beg you, try to do this on your own before you watch the video. Pause. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. All right, so we know here that the segment A to D is 21. We are told that we have midpoints here, one, two, three, which means that this is a median. And that means we have a two to one ratio going on here. This is 2x, this is x. And we only know what the whole thing is here. So this is 2x plus x equals 21, 3x equals 21, x equals 7. Now, watch out very specifically. You may think you're done just by solving for x, but we want a to g which is not x, this is 7, which means this is 14. It says UP is an angle bisector. Write a thing equation first. Well, there's a couple things here. We know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That's one thing equation. We also know that this angle at angle WUV equals angle one plus angle two. So let's see what we have here. Let's do a thing equation here. We have here WVU is that, so I have 11X minus six equals angle one, which I already have. But then angle two I don't have, not directly, but it's the same as angle one, so all I have to do is double it. We're going to solve for x here. That cancels. That cancels. So I end up with 3x equals 18. And we get x equals 6. You are not done. Let's see what it actually asks. Find x. Wait a minute. This question, you are done. One of rare occasions. But what I like to do is actually plug it in, see if it works. 11 times 6 is 66 minus 6. That's going to be 60. 4 times 6. That's going to be 24 plus 6. That's going to be 30. And if you times that by 2, you get 60. So you know you're correct. So today we're going to be talking about something called mid-segments and coordinate proofs. Mid-segments and coordinate proofs. It's very important you think about this very carefully. Read the concept and circle which equation could show it. Your vocabulary today Midpoint, slope, distance, you've heard that before, isosceles, congruent, parallel. I'm going to read this, and I'm going to pause five seconds, and I'd like you to circle one of these three. If you wanted to show that a set of segments were either parallel or perpendicular, which equation would you use? Circle. Parallel and perpendicular, that's a concept of slope. So you should have circled that one. Let's try another one. Again, I'm going to read it. Wait five seconds. You circle, and then we'll check. It's okay to be wrong. I would want you to take a stab at doing this on your own. If you wanted to show that a segment has been bisected, so a segment has been bisected, 
which equation would you use? Circle it. Bisected means to go through the middle. So if you're dealing with bisected, you're going to deal with midpoint. Last one. If you wanted to show that the lengths of segments were congruent, so two segments, separate segments, were congruent in length, what would you use? Length is a distance thought. It's a concept of distance. So what we're going to be doing is using midpoint, slope, and distance to describe the relationship between segments. So just take 20 seconds, reread these, and make sure you really understand why did we use slope for this concept? Why did we use midpoint for this concept? And why did we use distance for this concept? Make sure you understand that before you continue this video. Now I'm going to check for understanding. Ready? If you wanted to show on a coordinate plane that the opposite sides of a rectangle were congruent, In length, you would use which equation? So I want to show that these two sides were equal and these two sides were equal. I'd like you to circle the equation. Which one of these three would show opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent? That's congruent in length. It's a comparison of length that you should have said distance. Let's try two more. Ready? So the next two you're going to do on your own and then restart. So pause, don't copy, restart. Welcome back. This says if you wanted to show on a coordinate plane that the consecutive sides of a rectangle. Consecutive means next to each other. So consecutive would be like the orange side compared to this pink side. Were per ten circular, hopefully you get to that, or meet at a right angle. So if I wanted to prove that that was going on, which equation would you use? The concept of perpendicular is a slope concept. So you should have chosen slope. Number three, it says, if you want to show on a coordinate plane that the diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other. Bisect. So they cut each other in half. In other words, this is going to be equal going this way, and this is going to be equal going this way. You should have chosen midpoint. So bisect goes with midpoint. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. We're going to be using coordinate equations, distance, midpoint, and slope, to describe shapes. We're going to be connecting numbers to their shapes. Okay, so it says in triangle PQR, mark D as the midpoint of PQ and call it E.
back. So that's D there, and E is the midpoint of QR. So I have to scroll back and forth here. So the midpoint of PQ is D, and the midpoint of QR is E. Okay, now we're going to connect D to E. You connect the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle, midpoint, midpoint. This is called a mid-segment. I'm going to call it a mid-seg. That's called a mid-segment. It has a very particular property here. i like you to finger pinch this distance. Finger pinch DE compared to PR. i like you to finger pinch this distance and then finger pinch this distance. I'd like you to compare those, please. Okay. You should have noticed, hopefully, that that mid-segment is half of the third side, or going this way, that that third side is twice of. So here we go, the next page, there's D's the midpoint this way, E's the midpoint here, I draw that mid-segment. There's actually two observations I'd like you to make. I'm going to see if you can't find that second observation by yourself. In other words, you're observing what kind of relationship, what kinds of relationships does that mid-segment have with the third side? There's a couple things going on. I just highlighted one. So I'd like you to find what would that second thing be, and I'd like you to write it out here. I'm not going to fill that in for you. Two things. I've already mentioned one of them. I'd like you to figure out another one and write it down. I'm going to be looking for that when I correct your papers. There's two relationships there. One of them I just said on the previous slide. So it says, in the triangle below, D, E, and F are all midpoints of their corresponding sides. So D is a midpoint, E is a midpoint, and F is a midpoint. I'm going to read and fill in the summary below. So ready? Here we go. I'd like you to trace, please, DE and BC. Just physically trace it. DE, BC. So segment DE is what to BC and half of BC. It is parallel to BC and half of BC. Try another one. I'd like you to trace EF and AB. Let's do it again. Ready? EF and AB says EF is parallel to AB and half of AB. This one, I want you to trace FD and trace CA. And I'd like you to fill out these two blanks yourself. I'll be looking for those. Read it and fill it out yourself.
So now we're going to talk about mid-segments on a coordinate plane. It says in triangle RSP below, you have R, which is at negative 4 eighths. So right at R, we're going to write negative 4 comma 8. And S, which is at 4, 4. And T, which is at 0, negative 4. We're going to show mathematically. Offset word mathematically. That means we're going to use midpoint, slope, or distance. So mathematically that a mid-segment mid created by the midpoints of RS, I'd like you to trace this, the midpoints of RS and the midpoint of ST is both parallel to RT and half of RT. Now, parallel. Ask yourself this. To show parallel, is that a midpoint concept, a slope concept, or a distance concept? And comparing lengths, half, is that a midpoint concept, a slope concept, or a distance concept? Take a moment, write that out, and then I'd like you to circle which one of those three applies to each one of these words. To the concept of parallel and to the concept of half. Parallel is a slope concept, so we're going to be using slope for that. And half, that's distance. But there's actually a third one. We're talking about connecting this point. So at some point, we're also going to do the midpoint equation. So we actually are going to be using all three to be able to do this. So for step number one, we're going to find the midpoint of R to S. And R is at negative 4, 8 and 4, 4. So we make our midpoint template. And we're going to label that midpoint D. We're going to plug in our numbers here. Circle our X's. Box your wires. Ready? Do your own math. So D, the midpoint D, is going to be at zero two. Excuse me, it's not going to be a zero, 02. Zero, 06. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. I'm thinking 12 here, so we're going to go 0 and 6. Ready? You plot that. Zero, 06, it's right there. That's point D. Get your coordinates on there. That is at 0, 6, and that's one of your midpoints. Ready? Now we're also going to find the midpoint of ST. So that's going this way. We're going to label that E. Here's our midpoint template. Then we're going to show all our work. Boxer wise. is 4 over 2. That becomes 2. That's going to be 8 over 2.
That's negative. There's a negative here somewhere. That, yep, that's negative 4. And so this is going to be 0 over 2, which is 0. We plot that point. 2 comma 0. That's point E. Okay, now we found our midpoints. Remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say this mid-segment, so we first had to find our midpoints here, which one of which is 0, 6, the other one which is 2, 0. So now that's our midpoint, then we have our mid-segment. So we're going to show that the mid-segment DE, the mid-segment DE, which are coordinates we have right here, 0, 6, and 2, comma, 0, is parallel, parallel to RT. And R is sitting at negative 4, 8, and T is sitting at 0, negative 4. Concept of parallel? To show parallel, we use the slope equation. So to do this, we're going to find the slope of DE. And we're going to find the slope of RT. So both make your slope templates. Be really careful with our math here. Ready? Let's do the slope of DE first. That's going to be Y minus Y over X minus X. So draw an arrow connecting the Ys. So we're going to go 6 minus 0. Over 0 minus 2. Notice I keep consistent with my direction. And that gets me 6 over 2, which is positive That one's negative. So it's negative 3 over 1. And then we go this way, y minus y. This is going to be 8 and negative 4. And negative 4 over 0. Double negative makes a positive here. So that's going to be 12 over negative 4, which is still negative 3 over 1. So our slope here. Our slope of DE is negative 3 over 1, and the slope of RT is negative 3 over 1. So we just proved mathematically that the slopes are the same. The lines must therefore be parallel. So we mathematically proved, one, that this is a mid-segment because we did our midpoints. We proved that that was a mid-seg. And we proved that this compared to this was parallel. And for the mid segment, we use the midpoint equation. And for the parallel, we use the slope equation. Ready? The last one here, we're going to show that that mid segment is half of our T. And to do links, that's going to be the distance equation. Let's get our coordinates on here very carefully again. D is going to be at 0, 6, and E is at 2, comma, 0. R is at negative 4, positive 8, and T is at 0, negative 4. Now we're going to do our distance equation for both. So we, write, we start with a template. I'm going to do the template for DE. Make a template with me. Always start with the template. That's a blank equation. And then we're going to do the template for R to T. Ready? Let's plug our numbers in first. We're going to do D to E first, so I'm going to go Axis, draw your arrows so you keep consistent in the direction. That's 0 minus 2, 6 
6 minus 0. And then here, all right, now that we have our numbers in there, we can do our math. I'm going to make this a little bit larger so it's easy to see. Let's do our math here. Zero minus two is negative two. Negative two squared, that's going to be four. Plus six minus zero is six squared. That's going to be 36. So I end up with the square root of 40. Just leave that there for the moment. Here I'm going to do... This is negative 4 minus 0. That's negative 4 squared. That's 16 plus 8. Double negative makes that positive. So that's going to be 12 squared. That's 144. Square root. Let's add 16 and 144. I have the square root of 160. Now, it doesn't look like one is double the other, but let's check mathematically. So over here, we're going to do the square root of 40. 40 square root, that's approximately 6.3. Ready? Let's do the square root of 160. That's approximately 12.6. Now look really carefully. 6.3, 12.6. What do you notice? You should notice that if you take 6.3 and times by 2, you're going to get 12.6. So you have mathematically proven using the distance equation that this segment is double at 6.3 and this was 12.6 you have shown mathematically that this mid segment is twice the size or that's half the size of this or that's twice the size of that now what i think would be really good to do is take about two minutes here and zoom through this and take about 20 seconds a page and verbally recap what have you learned from this lesson. So take each page and just literally 20 seconds, not a lot of time, but just verbally recap what did you learn on each page. Take the time to do that. That's called metacognition. That's thinking about your thinking.